What is going on, gang? Today I finally get to show you the newest and what I think is the best Blue Eddy power station that they have come out with yet to date, and it is the AC240. I've had this guy for over a month now doing testing here in the shop. I've taken it with me on a couple of camping episodes. You might have seen it on my main channel last week, me using it. But I've kind of dug into this power station a little bit more than the rest of the Blue Eddies because out of everything that this power station offers, it is my favorite because of one simple fact. You've got this guy right here, which is a 30 amp, 12 volt DC output. So the AC500 Max had that, and then they kind of got away from it. They did a weird thing on the AC200L that doesn't have the cable that's ready yet for it to use that high amp DC output. This AC240 finally has it. There's a lot of things going on with this power station, guys, that I'm gonna kind of show you in this video of all the testing that I've done on it because Blue Eddy also has released this brand new B210 expansion battery that, that works with this and other power stations that Blue Eddy offers. But these two are the brand new uh, offerings from Blue Eddy. Let's just kind of dive right into it, guys. I'm gonna go over a couple of the main specs that you might wanna know, and then we'll get into the testing. So this big guy right here has got 1,536 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate in this unit alone. It's got a 2,400 watt rated continuous pure sign inverter. You can turn on power lifting up to 3,600 watts. And what that does is after, the 24, after you reach 2,400 watts, of output on this unit, it's gonna decrease the voltage on whatever device you're powering to enable it to, to keep running. I don't particularly uh, recommend doing that unless you're just running like a hot plate or something with a heating element that doesn't require that, that steady 110 or 120 volt output you can run it. It will do that up to 3,600 watts. A lot of the times though, I, I'll turn that off in the app. And, and it's got the same Blue Eddy app as all other Blue Eddy power stations. The app is good though. It's really easy to, to navigate through and update the settings, update firmware, all that good stuff. Um, this unit is parallel capable. So you can get another AC240, connect two of them together in parallel for a 4,800 watt continuous uh, pure sign output. So if you get two of them, you can get almost 5,000 watts of AC output on this thing. So I guess if you do wanna buy a second one for whatever reason, uh, there is an AC parallel port here on the side that you can connect two of them together. You can also, so, so this thing, you can really build this setup however you want, however, whatever your budget really will allow, you can connect up to four of these B210 batteries to the AC240 to create, I can't do the math off the top of my head, but it's over 10,000 watt hours if you have four of these plus the AC240. That is a lot of juice. Um, just for like, you know, a, a home backup solution. That's gonna get you out of a bind in most circumstances. Of course, it's probably not going to run your, your central home AC unit. All your other appliances, if you have it hooked up to this, are, are gonna run fine. Um, and again, if, if you wanna spend the money and get over 10,000 watt hours, you can do it. Kind of sidetracking here. I really, really, this is my most favorite design of a Blue Eddy power station they have to date. I don't know how to describe it, but it just feels better than every other one. It's got more squared corners as opposed to the, the kind of rounded corner look that a lot of these, that a lot of the previous Blue Eddy power stations have. I don't know, I just like the hard square corners, completely flat top. There is no wireless charging pad here up top. Blue Eddy seems to have kind of gone away from adding the, the wireless charging pads up top. I don't know why, I guess it's to save a few bucks but in all the latest ones that I've had, the AC200L, the AC240, they've omitted the wireless charging pad. I kind of miss that, Blue Eddy. I do like having the wireless charging pad up top. And the other really good thing about this power station, guys, is it comes with what Blue Eddy is calling a 30 amp. It's not a true 30 amp, but it does have that TT30 RV output receptacle right here. So you, if you do have a 30 amp or even a 50 amp RV, you can, you know, do, if it's a 50 amp RV, you could dog bone it down to a 30 amp plug it into this. Now again, this is 2400 rated continuous watts, so that's not a true 30 amp output, but you can still connect an RV, a, a boat, what, whatever that requires that 30 amp RV receptacle plug, and you're gonna get 2400 watts out of it. You turn on power lifting, you'll get 3600 watts, but that's if you choose to do so or not. But guys, with the, with the 30 amp RV plug, the 12 volt 30 amp DC output, you got two regular 120 volt outputs, and then all of these USBs, you got a couple of USB-C 100 watt outputs, then you've got two USB-A 18 watt outputs. And these are all not just 
what I would call a, a dust cover. This power station is IP65 water rated, so it can survive being out in the rain. If you happen to leave this outside while you're camping and, it, and you get caught in a, in a sudden thunderstorm, this will survive and I'll show you um, that I, I soaked this thing with water and it works just fine. So these are actually really tight fitting. They're not just a little flappy cover that I hate, but that's what gives it its IP65 water rating. And quickly moving over to the B210 battery, um, unlike some power stations and even some of the Bluetti new expansion batteries like on the AC180T, I believe, um, this one you can use independently of a power station. You can charge it up independently via solar. It'll take up to 60 volts at 10 amps or 500 watt max. So you can, you can hook up a 500 watt panel as long as it doesn't exceed 60 volts or 10 amps and charge this thing up independently. You don't have to connect it to this power station. And this thing actually has USB output. So you got your 12 volt cigarette style output, and then you got a couple, well, you got a USB-A 18 watt and a USB-C power delivery 100 watt. So I like that you can use this battery separately. You don't have to connect it to this, which is kind of of a downfall on some of these, bat on some of these power stations that have expandable batteries. You have to use them connected to this. That's not the case here. It's almost like Blue Eddie's listening to the things that we want and the things that we need. So good job for Blue Eddie. Now, guys, I'm just gonna dive right into testing. I'm, this video might be a little bit longer than usual, but there's a lot to go over with these two items. So I'm just gonna go straight to this 30 amp DC output port because you guys have probably seen my struggles with keeping my diesel heater running off of a standard 12 volt receptacle output that, that only has 10 amps. I'm gonna show you guys that it works off of this. And Blue Eddie does send a cable that works this time unlike the AC200L that I'm still waiting on this Unicorn D40 cable to make this 48 volt 8 amp DC output work. I don't, that D40 cable is still not available, so I can't use the high output DC on the 200L. But with this AC240, they do supply, and it comes in two pieces, so you have kind of options. You've got this proprietary Blue Eddy end, and it goes to an XT60 right now. So to get that thing working, you just push and plug right on that high amp DC output and you can either use the XT60 or they also do send an XT60 to Anderson. So this is what I use for my diesel heater because my diesel heater has Anderson inputs. So I'm gonna go grab that diesel heater and show you folks that it works just fine. Now granted my diesel heater only pulls maybe 12 to 13 amps, but it was just enough to basically not let any of my power stations uh, run my diesel heater. They would trip off every single time. This high amp output is great. And with these high amp outputs, if you guys are wondering why they're so great for van life or, or camping or RVs, you can cut this Anderson connection off if you want and leaving you a positive and a negative lead. You can connect that positive and negative lead to a fuse block. So you've got a fuse block now that's being powered by 30 amps worth of DC output, and you can connect whatever you want to that fuse panel, that fuse block, more charging ports, more USB-A output, whatever that is requires DC output in an RV up to 30 amps, you can just run this one cable to a fuse panel and then connect all of your stuff to that fuse panel, turn this thing on, and then all of those appliances are gonna work. Okay, so this is the DC cord that came with my diesel heater. And to do that, I'm gonna take the Anderson end of the DC cable that the power station comes with, plug it up, connect this to the diesel heater, and get this cut on. We're gonna turn on our DC circuit here. And this is powering up. I'll get you a close view of it, but we're gonna turn this thing on. Let's see if we can get the wattage. So right now, only 86 watts, 90 watts, but it's gonna climb up to over 10 amps, which would normally trip every single power station that I have right now. So let's get this heat cranked up. All the way up. There we go. And once this thing starts clicking, this wattage is gonna go up. So we're already at we're still sitting at 91 watts, but that those glow plugs are, haven't really heated up yet, so we're not pulling the startup amount of wattage that's needed to get these diesel heaters to run. But this truly does make it so much easier. I don't have to use that converter and plug it into the inverter side, which is way less efficient than running straight DC. It's just fantastic.
there we go, 126 watts. That would have tripped it. That would have tripped every other power station that I have. So unfortunately for me, I don't really need diesel heaters anymore, but next season, this power station is gonna easily run a diesel heater and room for more if I want it to. Again, this is 30 amps output. So the first of a few capacity tests that I'm gonna be doing actually consists of me using the B210 battery simply because that is going to take the longest. I've got 2150 watt hours on the B210 and I've got 1536 watt hours on the AC240. They are connected together now in parallel. We are sitting at 100% on the AC240 and I do have all battery indicators lit up green on the B210. So both of these guys are charged up fully. I've got my DC capacity tester sitting up here on top. It is zeroed out completely. I'm gonna cut this DC circuit on and this is a 10 amp circuit. So I'm gonna pull around 10 amps out of this DC capacity tester and I'm gonna dial it into as close to 10 amps as I can without it tripping off. And we are sitting at 9.8 seven amps. So I'm going to let this do its thing and it's going to take, it's kind of fluctuating back and forth right now while it figures out what it's doing, about 30 hours to completely deplete this whole setup. So guys, after about a day and a half, I'm going to come back and let you know how many watt hours I was able to squeeze out of this setup and we'll go from there. So I just want to hop in here, folks. We are on day one. We're about 18 hours into this test and we are about 22% capacity. But one of the things I wanted to show you folks is that you can see up here, I got one green light on this battery. So we have got 20% left remaining about on the expansion battery. 22% is showing on the AC240. So how the system works is it doesn't take this expansion battery and deplete it first and then go to the AC240 then deplete that, then you're done. It kind of merges the two batteries together, for lack of better terms, to create just one big battery. These are connected in parallel. So I do have a couple of power stations that have expansion batteries to where the expansion battery is, is used first, then the power station, and then when you go to charge it, it always charges the power station first and then the expansion battery. But in terms of discharging, you're not gonna discharge this first and then the AC240. It kind of acts as a one unit once you connect them together with this big cord on the side. So just in case you guys were interested how this system actually works, that's how it works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the test. The AC240 is sitting at 0%. My battery LED light is on. However, we have no battery indicator lights up here. And we were able to get out of that test 2,993.30 watt hours. So that equates to around 83 to 84% efficient off of this DC capacity test. Okay, so I am charging this now at the standard charge rate and we're getting 873 watts put into this power station. But let me show you the app because right now this is showing 13% and then you can see up here the battery indicator lights are blinking as well. But if I go into the app here, you can see where it says pack two, that's my B210. It is now at 13% capacity and if i go back to the main app you can see where the ac240 is at 13 percent. so as you can see it's kind of starting to even out now in terms of charging so it is 13 percent for both of these it is not giving me a 13 percent capacity for the expansion battery and this is at zero these two pieces as one unit is is at 13 percent now now i can go into the app here and i can change the charging speed it puts it up to around 1800 watts i believe and i probably will pop my breaker so right now i'm in standard charging mode i can go into turbo here and we immediately jump up to 1,772 watts. You can see it here on the app, 1.8 kilowatts, 1,800 watts. And I haven't popped my breaker yet, but what's crazy about this, guys, this is 1,800 watts going in here. I'm gonna stand right next to this fan and you cannot hear it. This is the quietest power station that I have ever tested here, uh, here in the shop. 1800 watts and I cannot hear it charge. Okay, so the fans did kick on here just a little bit. Let me get a decibel meter up so you guys can really get a, a feel for how loud those, or how not loud those fans are. 
So about 48 decibels and I am within one foot of this thing. So even with those fans now turning, it is still extremely quiet. So now we're just gonna test the actual AC240 capacity itself. So we are sitting now at exactly 100%. I've got my DC capacity tester zeroed out. And just like before, we're gonna get the DC circuit cut on and I'm gonna cut this up to around 10 amps. There we go, Nine point, around 9.8 amps. And so far right now, pulling 130 watts, this is telling me I'm gonna have about 10.9 hours until fully depleted. But we'll come back and check when this battery's dead to see how many watt hours we could get out of that 1,536 rated watt hours. So let's check out the inverter on this thing now, guys. So this is rated at 2,400 continuous running watts. So I'm gonna get my AC inverter cut on on the Blue Eddy. I got a 1500 watt space heater and a 1500 watt heat gun. That's what they're rated for. They don't typically pull that much once they get going, but let's cut these things on and see what it's gonna give us. So I'm gonna get the space heater on first. That's gonna bump us up to right at 1500, 1500 and that's 1600, 1700, 1800. And now it's gonna go back down. 1700, 1600 watts. We're gonna kind of slowly go back down to around 1500 watts. We're just below 1500 watts. So I'm gonna get this heat gun cut on now, full blast. That's 2830 watts. We're getting an overload warning. Let's see how long it lasts. We're flashing. It's telling us it's not happy, but it's still going. We're still going. Oh, there we go. Okay, it did finally just cut off. So that thing ran for a good two minutes uh, at 2,800 watts. I'm gonna cut this AC off, cut that heater off. All right, let's reset that inverter. I'm gonna cut this heater back on, guys. I wanna check the voltage. Now this is again around 1,500 watts. So let's check out the voltage and the sine wave that this unit puts out. Nice, solid 120 volts. That's awesome to see. Not 110, but a good 120 volts. Now for the sign, yeah, perfect sine wave. And that's running 1500 watts. So that's good to see. Now this also does have, let me get this unplugged here. This does have a, a UPS feature. So I'm gonna use the power cord that comes into the Blue Eddy and it's just a push, push in, which I actually don't mind this one. Uh, it seems to click in pretty easily. All right, now I will start charging. So I'm inputting, yeah, it's around 500 watts right now. I'll plug this light array in. That's bright, I know, I'm sorry. So you guys probably all know how UPS features work. So I'm gonna disconnect this cord from my wall and then you'll see these lights flicker just like that. And that's what, what's happening there is this is the power from my AC grid going through this battery and bypassing the battery right now to power these lights. When I unplug that cable, it's going to immediately switch over to battery power to keep these lights running. I was kind of off camera, but in three, two, one. Hardly any, let's do that again. I'm gonna plug it back in. Three, two, one. That's fast. So UPS feature works fine on this thing. I forgot that I had this microwave in here for another uh, review I was doing, but I got my super mom mug <laughs> with water. We're gonna stick this in here and uh, this shouldn't be, shouldn't be any problems for this AC240 to, to run it. But just to show you, Eleven hundred and twenty watts. So this microwave really isn't even scratching the surface of what this AC two forty can handle, but yeah, it'll run a microwave. This next test actually kind of pains me to do, but this has an IP sixty five uh, water resistant water and dust resistance rating, so it can withstand environmental rain and dust and things like that. You obviously can't submerge it, but you can get it wet, like if you leave it out in the rain. So to kind of test that. I've got some flour to simulate dust. 
which really is no big deal. Now we'll get some water on it. That's a pretty good rainstorm, I would say. And I would never try to plug in an appliance uh, while it's still wet. I would actually do my due diligence and you know wipe it down and, and whatnot, but we'll power this thing on now. That green light cuts on, and let me show you. Sun's terrible. If you can make it out, we are on. I can cut the AC inverter on. we go so yeah pretty cool so now we're gonna check out the AC inverter and do a parasitic drain test so I'm gonna get my timer started up here and you can see that we are sitting at 100% I am NOT plugged in the grid we're gonna get the AC cut on and we're gonna come back sometime tomorrow to see how efficient this inverter is we are coming up on almost 23 hours right now, and our battery is sitting at 76%. So this unit's looking like it's using approximately 1% an hour. That is not an exact number, but it's close enough for me. Um, and again, remember this is a 2400 watt inverter, so this is a very large inverter in here. Um, so I would say that's fairly efficient for a unit of this size, roughly 1% per hour. For those of you who are curious about the DC parasitic drain, Batteries at 100%. We are not plugged in to any type of grid. We're not charging. I'm going to cut on the DC circuit. We are going to hit start and we'll come back tomorrow to see where that battery stands running only the DC circuit. We are going on almost 21 hours here, gang, and you can see that the AC240 is sitting at 99%. So the amount of battery drain after 20 hours on this thing is pretty negligible. So I would say that the DC efficiency on this unit is great. You can turn this feature off to where it doesn't run all the time. You can have it on eco mode setting and you can have it set to turn off two hours, four hours, whatever you choose to cut off. I had that feature turned off for this test, but you can tell that the DC circuit hardly uses any power when not in use. After all of those discharge testing guys, I can tell you that one of the great benefits of this, and like many other Blue Eddy power stations, it does have fast charging on it. I use that quite frequently, and it is great to, to get this thing charged up very quickly. It'll, go, it'll charge up to 2400 watts on the AC grid side of things. You can input 1200 watts worth of solar, and you can essentially get this thing topped up to 80% directly from AC grid in around 45 minutes. So that came into play a lot on this video, having to keep recharging it up to full to do those capacity testing. So you can change the amount of AC grid input to charge through the Blue Eddy app, just like all of the other Blue Eddy power stations. You can select all the different rates of charge that you want, because you don't always want to force feed this battery up to 2400 watts. It is hard on the battery. Sometimes if you have time, slow charge, a little bit easier on the batteries. And as far as solar is concerned, yes, it does take up to 1200 watts of solar. However, in my case, and I don't know if you can tell over here, if you can see it, I got my AC200L hooked up to my 830 watts of solar panels I have hooked up in the backyard. I was hoping that this would work with that. However, to get to the 1200 watts, it's a little bit tricky. You have to be in between 11 and 60 volts and no more than 21 amps. My solar panels that I have in the backyard are around 70 volts. I have them hooked up in series. So they're over voltage than what this will take. And if I hook them in parallel, they're around 26 amps, which is more than the 21 amps. So you have to be pretty careful on your choice of solar panels to get that full 1200 watt rated maximum PV input, which is why I'm using my 200L for my 830 watts because this thing goes up to 150 volts. That's about the only thing that I can see on this power station I wish they would have added. Uh, allow us to put a little bit more voltage into this MPPT controller that's built into it. So it just gives us a broader range of solar panels that we can use and not have to really, really do some mathematical equations to figure out what solar panels we can use to get to that, that 1200 watt rated max. But it's doable, I just can't do it here at my house. That, that's it for this for the AC240 guys. All I'm gonna say, this was a long video, I'm sorry, but this is my 
my most favorite power station that Blue Eddy's put out to date. Uh, to me, it, it kicks that. Don't even look at the AC200 Max. That's that's an antiquated, old old school. Requires a charging brick, 500 watt AC input only. Uh, this, in, in every way, is better than the AC200 Max, um, AC200P. It's it's just a better power station, and it works perfectly for my situation. What I need it for out in my truck camper. Uh, everything about it. 2400 watts. I've never needed that much power out camping, but it, it can do it. So what can I say, guys? This product actually releases tomorrow. So I will put a link for the Blue Eddy website down below. It is not, uh, I don't get any kickback. I don't get any money if you buy it. Uh, I'll, I'll put the, the Blue Eddy link in the, in the video description. So gang, thanks for watching. I know that was a, a little bit longer video than, than we all like, but a lot to go over. So gang, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Stay tuned.